my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to be trying to fix this dishwasher again. Now, I've had a lot of problems with this dishwasher over the years. It's only six years old and I had to change the heater element after two years, so that was the original Zanussi one. And then two years after that it went again and I thought, well, okay, you know, it's a cheap aftermarket part. And now, again, it's gone again, so it seems like I can only get two years out of the heater element. Now, I'm not 100% sure that it is the heater element, but what's happening is, everything's working fine, it's just that when you open it up at the end, there's no heat there. And when you take out your dishes, they're covered in water, so they're not drying themselves off. So I'm almost certain, as certain as, certain as I can be, that it is the heater element. So what I've done is, a bit of a, it could be a schoolboy error. I'm taking a chance here. I should have taken it apart and used a continuity tester on my meter to see if the heater element was broken, but I have just gone and bought one because I'm that certain that it's gonna be faulty that uh, I'm willing to take the risk. So basically, this only costs 18 pounds, so I don't expect to get any more than two years out of it again. If I had the option, I would buy a more expensive part but I can't seem to find them. They all seem to be online for around the same price. So now let's just uh, do a quick continuity test on this just to make sure that it is tested okay. So let's get the meter. So basically all that happens is the water rushes through here and if you have a look, there's a heater element. You can see it's covered in ceramic here and also you can see it here as well. So this would go all the way through, winding, I presume it winds around like this and then comes up this end here. So if I go across here and here, there should be continuity. If there's not, then that says to me that the heater element is broken. So I presume when I take out the old one, there will be no continuity. So look now, it makes a noise when I go across. And you can hear now that is continuity. So there's continuity between basically here and here, which is the element. So we'll test the old one when it comes off and I'm hoping that it is faulty, otherwise it could end up being something more major. So what we have to do is, to begin with, we need to make sure that this is unplugged so there's no risk of any electric shock. So let's do that now. Right, so I've got it unplugged. I can't show you until I actually uh, drag it out. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start uh, dragging it out. I'm gonna turn off the water going into it and then we have to drain the water from the bottom here. So first of all, what I need to do is I need to get the plinth down the bottom and I need to take the plinth out. Now with this, they just kind of, you just have to kind of force them out. They're held in with clips. I'll show you the clips in a minute. So excuse all the mess, but basically these are the uh, these are the clips here. Yeah. So let's get rid of this. Right now, if you're wondering what model number this is, because you will need to know when you're actually getting your replacement parts, if the same thing happens to yours. On this one, it's written just down here. So if you have a look, it says uh, Zanussi, and it's a ZDT41. So somewhere on your dishwasher, hopefully there will be a little label telling you what it is. Okay, so now to release it, I have to undo these screws here and also undo the screw up there as well. Then hopefully the whole thing will slide out. Oh, I haven't said it in this video, but obviously do not copy what you see in this video. This is a trying to fix video. So I will be doing plenty of things wrong. I am not a kitchen appliance repair man whatsoever. So these are the clips that hold it into the actual cabinets itself. You know, the, these are the things that you see me unscrew a minute ago. Right, so all the pipes there, it's the right mess, but all the pipes go off there. So I'm gonna have to, should be okay with the waste left connected, but I'm gonna have to turn the water off. Obviously the water is gonna be underneath the sink. Right, okay, this is where all the cleaning rubbish is kept. So we've got the plug unplugged now, and also the, uh, if you have a look there, you can see the valve to turn off the dishwasher. So right now there's no electricity going into it and there should be no more water going into it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try to drain it because I will have to be tipping this up to work on it, or at least I'll be wobbling it around the place. 
Okay, so let's empty out the drawers. With this top one here, you have to do these brackets. Can you see these little brackets here? So just slide those to one side and do the same on the opposite side and then the wheels will come straight out. Now this is what we want to be working on down here. So let's dismantle this as well. I'm just going to put those both in the sink. They can be clean later. Now we're going to get a saucepan and a cloth and I'm going to start draining from here just to make my life easier. Be careful that it doesn't tip forward like that because obviously we've got a lot of weight on this door now. Okay, so that is it drained out now. So uh, hopefully, if I kind of wobble it around the place, I'm not going to get water spilling everywhere. I may have to, if I do have to turn it on its side, then a lot more water is going to come out because from memory, there's something on this side here which is all full of water as well. But every little helps. So now, uh, what I'm going to be doing is I have to basically dismantle the casing around it so I can get underneath it because the element is located underneath. So I'm going to have to take off the side panels. Uh, the underneath panels and stuff like that. Now obviously this is going to be different on every single dishwasher so I'm just going to be really fast forwarding through this bit until we get to the heater element. Right, so as you can see now, it's all at an angle because the third leg at the bottom has now gone up into the dishwasher because we've removed the tray and we've also removed the thing that you adjust it with, so there's nothing keeping it in place. So I'm just going to remove the water from this little bit here. Looks like it's some kind of like overflow from this part here, so it looks like it might spill. So I'm just going to get the cloth and remove that. So I've drained the water out there, and if you have a look in here, you can just see the heater element there. Yeah, can you see the wires go into it? So it's in a really fiddly place. It's held in with some of those Jubilee clips that you have to squeeze. You can see them here. So you need to get pliers, squeeze them, and then you can ease them off the pipe work. So I can't remember now when I removed this before whether loads of water came out or not. I presume there's going to be some water in there. And I think it might be easier for me to get it from the other side. So it looks like I'm going to be removing this one from this side, and then the other ju Jubilee clip I'm going to have to go to the other side, I think. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to film this. Let's try to get the tripod and zoom in. Yeah, I can't really get the camera to uh, any position where the camera can actually see it because it's all kind of encased. So I'm just going to try to hold it in one hand and then do the work with the other hand. Now, so let's lift the pipe work out of there. Now that's freed up a bit of room there. And now I'm going to unclip. Can you see that white connector there with the grey wires go into it? And it looks like there's also an earth down there as well. So there's a little earth wire connection just going down there. Just see the end of it. Let's dust that one out. And let's get the earth wire out. There we go. So now what I have to do is I have to try to get that Jubilee clip. I'm not sure if it's right, it's underneath. So can you see it underneath? So I'm going to have to get the pliers and I'm going to have to squeeze it there and then hopefully the pipe will come off. I'm just going to use what I call mole grips. They're probably called different things in different countries. I'm wondering if we should put this on, on its back thing is though, then I'm going to have to definitely have to drain everything. Now I'm going to try to do it like this, I mean, in order to film it, it would be better if this was on its back, because then I could film it from underneath, but from my point of view, it's going to take, uh, it's just going to drain everything then. So at least this way, hopefully I can mop most of it up with a tea towel and a saucepan.
Right, okay, I've got one side off. It's really fiddly, basically, because there's little, what, very little room. I had to get the mole grips and put them on there when they're open. Try to close it, and then when they're closed, you've got a bit more room to work. And then it's just a case of kind of wiggling the pipe off the heater. So I've got it off the one side now. So now I have to go around the other side and try to lo loosen it off the other side. Good news is there's not water flying out everywhere. Right, okay, now we're the other side, and if you have a look, can you see there that there's the other side of the heater? You can see it still looks immaculate from the outside, but it will hopefully be the inside that's gone. And there's the Jubilee type clip that I have to squeeze. Can you see the two prongs on the right hand side and the kind of loop on the left hand side? So that's what I need to get my mold grips into, and I need to squeeze that and then try to pull the pipe this way off that heater. And then we can test the heater, and I really do hope that it is testing faulty. Right, I've got it out, so that was, wasn't an easy job. So here it is now, so as you can see, it's uh, it's in very good condition. I mean, that actually does look new. So let's get the multimeter, and I'm hoping now it does show a break in these two, uh, between these two here. Right, here we go, I'm starting to doubt myself now, just because it looks in such good condition, but obviously uh, looks doesn't mean that it's gonna be good on the inside. Oh, that's worrying. Right, okay. Uh, let me get an ohms reading between both of them. Oh, I'm worried now. I was wanting that to be completely uh, open circuit. Right, so I'm on ohms now. Let's go between, let's just go between here and here. Right, 25.6 ohms. Twenty-seven ohms. Oh I don't believe it. There's nothing wrong with that. What else is it? It's not heating up. Do you know what? I was sure it was gonna be that. I would have well I wouldn't have bought it otherwise. Ah unbelievable. Right, okay, uh, how am I going to do this now? How am I going to do this? I mean, the connector was definitely connected to the top of it. Let's make sure we've got continuity between other parts. So basically, this is the earth here, so that's going to be basically, uh, that will have continuity everywhere on the actual cover of it. Now, let's go on to these here. Yeah. Oh, you, you can see the scale building up on the inside. I live in a very hard water area, you see. Maybe I can try and scrape some of that off. Right, I'm going to have to have a, a, a think now. I mean, I don't know... I don't know what to do next. I suppose I'll have to look at the connector and go through from there. Let's bring the camera around there. Right, so this is one of the connectors. This is the earth and this is the connector here. Ah! Okay, that doesn't look healthy in there. Look. That doesn't look healthy at all. But saying that, that is just on the plastic. The actual metal itself looks okay in there. Right, I'm just going to try to trace these wires. When I have a bit of a better idea of what's going on, I'll get back to the filming. Right, OK, it's going to be a few minutes later, so I haven't really got much more info. But from here, because the thing is, I'm not overly happy with those contacts there. From there, the grey wire goes, there's two grey wires. One goes off to this device here, and then the other one 
goes straight up here. So I think that must go up to some sort of control board. So the control board I'm presuming must be in this bit here. So I've never ever looked inside here. So maybe I need to get to the control board to see that gray wire and then I can test into the heater element and that will tell me if these connections here are any good or not. The thing that makes me think maybe it's not the connections, I know the plastic looks a bit messy. If you look here, the connections look absolutely perfect. Remember this is the one with all the scaling, so the connections look perfect here. So uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not convinced that it is those contacts there. Part of me is wondering, you know, is this faulty? But the thing is, it's testing pretty much the same as the new one. And if there's continuity between here and here, that must mean then that it is going to heat up and it would heat up the water and it's not heating up the water, which makes me think it's, it's something else. But this is the only thing, as far as I know, that heats up the water. But maybe this is not getting the signal to heat up the water. I don't know. Also, having looked, there's other things I need to look at. So I noticed there was a bit of corrosion here. I know this is nothing to do with the faults, but look, I pulled that off there and you can see that that's very corroded here. So I'm going to have to get the fiberglass brush and give all that a little clean up as well. Okay, so what I've done is I've just got the contacts here and I just cleaned it with sandpaper. So you can see they're kind of roughed up now. This thing here looks like it's some kind of reed switch or something. If you have a look there. And also it looks like there's something that moves up and down next to it. So maybe there's a magnet in here and maybe this is a reed switch, I don't know. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some of this deoxit on it to give it a try to make it the best connection that it can be. It's really bad, but hopefully with a little bit of this and a bit of sandpaper, it will clean up okay. Okay, let's see if we can get to this control panel and then we'll have a better idea of what's going on. worried about the weight on this wire here so I'm going to get some cable ties and then try to strap this to the wires so I can uh, you know, so the weight's not all on this here. Right, so I think the first thing I should do is I'm going to just have a look at the control panel before I get involved with the wiring. I mean it is possible that the wiring has gone faulty where it's going through the bottom here because the doors are constantly being open and close so that is a possibility but I want to have a look at a circuit board here mainly out of curiosity but also to see if there's any burn marks or anything like that on it. It's always handy to know how this thing comes apart because in the, in the future if I need to get in here it means I'm able to. Okay. Right, so this is a circuit board here, it all looks very clean. Let's try to pop it out and then see what's, uh, see what's happening. Now it looks like these only fit in one way which is quite good so they're kind of like idiot proof so it looks like I'm not going to be able to get them wrong when I push them back in. Right so this is the board here and also we have this up here as well but I think this is more to do with the buttons and the lights and stuff so I'm presuming that is going to be okay that side. Let's have a look here see if we can see anything obvious. Real close look at this now and see if I can see any dry solder joints or anything like that. I mean, it does absolutely look immaculate. Okay, I've had a good look around here and I can't really find anything that's dodgy with it. The wire that we were tracing, you know, the grey wire, it looks like it goes up to this solder joint here. And this looks to be some kind of relay because if you look at it, it says. RL1, so I presume that's a relay. Now what I've done is I have put that info in online and I have got a spec sheet for that, so possibly I could test that by applying, I think it's 12 volts across 
two points of it and then I believe it's supposed to switch in between. So maybe if we could, I could get my bench power supply, put 12 volts into this, we might be able to hear it clicking. We might be able to test it with uh, a multimeter to see if it's changing, but I'll show you that in a minute. First thing I wanna do is, I wanna double check these wires because there is a chance that, for example, the gray wire here is not getting down to the heater element because if you have a look, the gray wire goes down here, across here, it goes in through this part here and it goes, I presume, through there and it looks like it comes out here and then it goes all the way down through there and it comes up to here. So right now I've got it connected to the old heater element. You can see the heater element there. And also, I believe these have uh, a thermostat built into them as well. So what I've been doing is I've been actually going, remember when I was testing it, I was going from the prongs here to here so the thermostat must be somewhere in here so essentially i'm going from the wires so the wires should be separate separated to here by the thermostat i'm thinking so if i've got continuity between here and here and that wire and there then it should be okay so let me just show you that so again i've got my meter set to continuity and if i go between here the top here and here you can hear i've got it and this side here will also come up there because remember it's going through here. So obviously it is all making a circuit as far as the wires are concerned. So although this is really badly messed up here, the look of it, the wires themselves look okay. It looks like it's all on the white plastic. And I do remember the very first time I changed this over, it was rusty everywhere. The whole thing was just a big cylinder of rust so obviously that's where this connector's got rusty from the old one not from this one here so now what we should be able to do is we should be able to unplug this from here because one of the gray wires goes off to here and the other gray wire goes up to here so i should be able to test between here and here and then it should do the full circuit through that electric heater so let's unplug that there and unplug one second, let me just put this down. Unplug this here. There we go. So now I should be able to test it from there. So again, I'll get my meter. And I'll go from here to here. One second, it pops out here. There we go. Let me unravel my leads a bit. That's it. Now, so if we go in here, there we go, I've got continuity. And if you have a look, 26 ohms, which is what the heater's testing. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna wiggle the door, open and shut a few times. So let's uh, try to open this door up. Hold on, one second, I can't open the door up. I've cable tied it, can't tie it sharp. One second, let me cut this open. Right, I just have to cut my cable ties, so now I'm doing it, and let's open the door. Now you can't see what I'm doing, but basically I'm opening and closing the door. And it's not making any difference at all. Just hold up here so you can see what I'm doing. Right, so that says to me, it's nothing to do with the actual wiring itself. So I don't believe it's the wiring, I don't believe it's the electrical heater. So now the other two things it goes through are, obviously it could well be the control board, so I think we should test that relay. And also it could be something to do with this. I believe this, I had this off years ago, I believe this is something to do with when there's enough, enough water in it, this recognizes it. So possibly the heater doesn't kick in until there's water in it, because it makes sense, otherwise it's heating nothing. And uh, maybe if this was faulty, this unit here, then it's not going to recognize that there's water in it. So I think maybe I might take this off next and then test the relay after that. Okay, check this out. I'm trying to work out how to take this thing off here. And look closely here. It looks like the pipe feeding it is really badly burnt. Maybe that's the problem. If there's no suction there, it's not going to be recognizing the fact that there's water in there. So I think it's very important that we get this off. Now I think I have to just undo this screw here 
and then hopefully this will pull apart. Let me try to get the camera set up. Okay, I'm quite looking forward to seeing what's going on here, so let's undo this one here. Now, apologies for the bad filming, it's because I'm doing this on my own, and it's very hard, because I need both my hands working on it. It's hard to get the camera in to where I need it to go, because I'm dealing with it on a tripod, or just trying to balance it off the floor. And also, I've got all the pipe works connected down here, so I can only drag this out so far, hence the reason that a lot of the time it's not, uh, it's, I, I can't get the camera where I need it to go to show you. No, okay, that's burned, but it hasn't... That is definitely, they're both burnt, but it hasn't gone through. Let me just see that now. Let me see underneath. Oh, right, no, it's not actually burnt, it's just a kind of soundproofing again. Oh, I thought that might have been it. Right, let's see. So both wires go to this one here. So I should be able to undo this one. And we should be able to do some sort of test. Let me get my pliers again. Let's loosen that. Let's try to undo this. I'm not sure if water is going to fly out here or not. I suppose I have to keep it quite high up. There we go. Right, so. Yeah, that definitely hasn't gone through. It looks bad, but I can see on the inside there that there is no there is no hole in the actual pipe itself when I look through there. Same on that one. Right, so I'm thinking what happens here is that when this is connected, when there's water in the pipe, that these two must these two must connect. So, if I was to blow or suck into that, then these two should join. So let's see if it's working. Continuity again, let's see what's happening first of all. So let's go across here and here. Right, so at the moment there's nothing. I'm thinking that when I blow into here, when I suck into here, I'm thinking that that is gonna start beeping. So now, how am I gonna do this? Remember everything, remember everything is off, so it's not dangerous what I'm doing. Really, I need a bit of pipe work or something that I can, that I can put onto there. Right, here goes. You're just going to hear it. Okay, so it's when I blow. Yeah, so that says to me that that's working fine. So obviously when it fills up with water, it must push air along this pipe here. So it pushes air along into here and connects these two up, which then allows the circuit to be made, which should allow the heater element to come on when the control board is asking for it. That's how I'm reading it. Anyway, I could be completely and utterly wrong. I'm going to put this back together. I don't believe that that is a problem. Right, just off camera, what I've done is I've just blown into here and I can hear it going into the drain at the bottom. You know the drain that I uh, emptied out earlier? Yeah, so when that's full of water, that's going to act completely differently. Right, so when that's full of water, that is going to, you know, when you're blowing there, you're just going to be blowing bubbles on the inside. So I think that's all working fine. Let's close this up here. Right, so to me now, it's pointing that it's a fault on the control board. Right, so that's that there. Let's pop this back on. You know, the control board is probably the most expensive thing as well. I think what we'll do is let's just see if there's a way of testing that relay. Okay, so that's back together now. So now let's try and see if we can test this relay. So what I've done is, do you see this number up the top here? JS1B12VF. 
I type that into Google and it's come up with a spec sheet. So let me show it to you because it's going to make a lot more sense to everybody else than me. But from what I can gather, this is what I can gather. This is it on this side here. Now, remember that this one here is the grey one. Let's just double check that. The grey wire is... Hold on. The grey wire is this side here. Right, so this is the grey wire here. So it goes up to this point here. And I've tested it for continuity. All of these are testing OK for continuity. So if I go onto that one there, you can see that it is actually getting up to the relay. And if I go onto this one here, and this one is the blue wire, which should be the neutral, you can see it's going to there. So basically, the, it doesn't look like there's any bad joints, and from there it goes up to, this one goes up to here, and again it's OK. There, you see? So that all appears to be okay, but with this one, the grey wire, the one that's feeding the heater element, it looks like it just goes from this relay. Now, I believe how this one works is from, I think it's when, I think it's when 12 volts is applied between these two points here, which is like a coil, I believe, at the moment it's connected between here and here, but I believe when 12 volts is applied it goes between here and here. So at the moment, this is just a kind of like wire that's not doing anything because this grey wire is just going to this point here, which I believe doesn't go anywhere. I'm not sure. Don't think. I don't think that wire goes anywhere, but I won't know until I unsolder this. I might not even be unsoldering it. But when 12 volts is applied between these two points, then I believe it goes from here to here. So then it's going to be connecting up the blue wire with the grey wire. So it's connecting up the neutral with the grey wire, which I presume is like making the circuit via the, yeah, because the brown wires go down to this thing down here. So I suppose when, let me get this right, let me have a look here now. Yeah, so the brown wires go down to, down to here. So basically when this is full of water, this turns on, which makes the brown wire, which must be the live wire, go up to the gray. The gray then gets connected to the neutral via the relay, which puts 240 volts into the heater element, which is obviously going to heat the water up. And if this relay is not working, then it's not going to go anywhere, is it? Because you can apply 12 volts all day across here, and it's not going to switch between them. So if you look right down here now, I do have some resistance. So if I go between, watch this now, where am I? So this is the coil here. So if I go onto the coil, it's reading 0.38 kilo ohms. And then if I go between the coil and this one, which is, I think, uh, normally closed. So I think this is down as NC. If you have a look, can you see there? Is it these two? There we go. So 80, 95 ohms, 100 ohms. It's kind of jumping all over the place though. Let's put it to continuity just to see if it does go off. Yeah, it does. What well, it did for a second. It's jumping all around the place. I really don't know what that means. Then it goes open. Not too sure. Maybe it should do that, but if I, let's just go to normal ohms, hold on. Right, so if I go between here and here. I mean, it is giving me a reading, isn't it? But yet, if I go between here and here, then can you see it's completely open? So I think what we should do is, I'm gonna show you the data sheets because then you will know, you might be able to help me out if I can't get it working. Uh, and then I think I'm going to try to put 12 volts between here and here. The thing is, I don't know what's positive and what's negative because I can't see it on the actual sheet. Maybe it doesn't make a difference if it's just a coil, but it does look like these two points are connected via this, looks like a diode because it's down as D8, D8 here. And it looks like those two little coil points come out here, which goes up via that via, which goes to here. And this one that disappears in here, which I presume goes to this one here, but I don't really know. Right, I'll show you the data sheet. Okay, so if you have a look at it here, I believe that this is what it is. Yeah, I've typed in the number and that's what's coming up. Now, obviously there must be a whole range of these, but do you remember that this one here was JS1? 
So you go JS1B, 12 volts. And if you have a look, JS and then 1 means form C standard, and then this one would be the voltage, uh, 12 volts here. And B means, I think, whatever, class B installation. I haven't got a clue what it actually means, but I don't think that's important for what I need to know right now, but this one is form C. And if we go across, now obviously I don't know how to read these, but for example, there's coil data readings, but it looks like I have to put voltage into it to be able to mesh, uh, measure, oh, hold on, what's that? Normal operating current coil resistance. See, I, I, that actually doesn't mean anything to me, but this is the one that I'm interested in. Let me just go back one. What's this here? See, this is all the different... Uh, this would be all the specifications, uh, shock resistance, switching capacity. Again, unfortunately, it's just all double dutch to me. But if I go to here, remember I said it was form 1, form C. So it's this one here. And if you have a look, you can see that there is... Uh, it says the coil here, and then you've got... I presume the common, and then you've got, I believe that means no contact, and, no, sorry, I believe that means normally closed and normally open. And that sort of makes sense, because when I have this up this way round, that is behaving the same way. So when I have this that way round, it is operating the, the same way. So for example, this is the coil here and here. So between here and here is normally closed, which is what it says here. And then when I apply 12 volts, it should go between here and here, I believe. So let's do that and see if we can hear a click. And uh, yeah, you never know. If I can hear the click, I might be able to then measure continuity between the common and the normally open. Yeah, so hopefully that will then turn on and that says to me the relay is okay. If it's not, I can buy these. They're not that expensive. It just means I have to wait quite a few days for them to arrive. It would still be a lot cheaper than having to buy the whole circuit board itself. Right, I've just looked up the price for the control board and I'm pretty shocked, 115 pounds. So, uh, God, I don't, really don't want to have to spend that on this dishwasher. Uh, I really hope I can get this working with just that relay or something. Okay, now I hope I don't ruin this. Now, as I say, don't, don't copy me because I really am unsure about this. So I'm going to put it up to 12 volts because that's what it says the switching is. And I mean, it does say on the, on the top here as well. It says like, whatever that means, spule 12 volts. And it's DC as well, that's a symbol for DC. So that should, that should be okay. I'm just going to see that we are, test that we ha are actually getting 12 volts. So I get the multimeter. Yeah, 12 volts, fine, okay. So now, let's pop it on here and let's see if we hear any clicking. I really don't know what's uh, negative and positive or does it just not make a difference? Hope I don't blow this up now. Right, here we go, let's see if we can hear a click. No, it didn't like that, so that's a short. Hold on. It is going to short though, isn't it? Because there's a coil. Can I hear it clicking? I mean, that doesn't mean anything to me now, does it? Uh, what I really need to do is touch them two. thing is, as soon as I touch them two, these two are going to... What am I doing wrong? Surely the coil has to be energised in order to get the relay to work. But my power supply here is not liking it because there's a short. That happens when I touch the wires together. I don't know what to do. Do I just have to put the voltage down one and use a, a ground, an earth? A ground, so these these are all of the ground planes here. Let's just do the, the negative of the capacitors. Okay, should I try that? Go on to there now, let's see what happens. No, no, it's the same thing, isn't it? Right, 
right, so I've got my sun helping me now. Let's see if we get any reading on this at all. But my worry is that every time I connect this, I think as a safety thing, it, it, every time you hear the beep, I reckon it just cuts the power. All right, so there's no meter reading there. Let's go the other way around. No, nothing. Okay, thanks, Ben. Why can't I test it? Is it because it's in circuit? Is that the fault? Maybe that's the fault. Maybe I should unsolder it and see because I know which way it goes back in. I'm going to unsolder it and see what uh, see what see what happens. So let me get this out using the solder sucker and the soldering iron and see if I can test it differently when it's away from all this circuit because possibly maybe that's the problem. Maybe it's something else on here which is shorting. I really don't know. Right, okay. Right, so we've got a diagram on here. So we've got the coil between number two and five. The commons one, three is normally open and four is normally closed. So I wonder now if we put the power supply on it again, is it still going to short? No, excellent, it's not, and listen, listen. Do you hear that? So the relay is working, isn't it? It works both ways around. So now, if I go across here, I should get continuity the other way. I'm all happy about this, but why? Because if the relay is working, what else is it gonna be? It's gonna probably be something more sinister. So now it should be between here, normally closed, and here. So we're getting a reading on the meter there. So now if I go between here and put the power on it, then we should get a reading there. Let me get my son back. Ben, can I borrow you again? Right, so I've got my son here now, so he's gonna do the interesting bit of putting 12 volts across the coil, and I'm gonna measure across these two bits here. So go on, Ben, you touch them to them, keep them on there. Keep them there. There we go, look, the, the reading's coming. Now keep them on there. There you go. So that's a short, isn't it? 0.3 ohms. Let me just put its continuity. Right, let go a minute. Now, let's do that, let's do that again. Keep it there. i do that again. There we go. So 100% that relay is working. Now let go. There we go. So... The relay's working, so there's something else wrong with this board, so this is about to get interesting now. So let's start looking at this board closer to see if we can find out exactly what's faulty. Right, okay, so you can see the problem is between the coil here, because when I again get my meter and go between here and here, it's shorting. So we need to find out why. So if you have a look, it goes to that little via there and this little via here, and it comes up here and here so you can see that that goes to that diode and that goes to that diode there so what I need to start doing is now trying to work out where you know where the problem is is the diode shorting is that the problem could it be a capacitor I, I really don't know but I need to work back from here hopefully it's not going to be one of these ICs but again it could be so that's what I'm going to do now uh, when I have a bit more info I will get back to filming Okay, so I've been going through this circuit board here and there's, there's lots that are not making sense to me. There's lots of things that look like they're faults. Now, I think I'm going to have to start lifting things off the board to try and find out what's what. So basically, to begin with, this capacitor here, C27, is shorting because if I get a ground, so I'm just on the top of the board, I'm just using this as my ground here because when I go on here, it goes on to, uh, for example, the negative of the capacitors. So... Uh, I'm taking that as my ground, and also if you have a look, you know, this plane here must be the, the ground, so things going all the way around here. Yeah, or that one there. So if you have a look now, if I go between here and both sides of this C27, 
you can hear that it's shorting on both sides yet on the other capacitors it's not doing that so we've got that one there and also this little capacitor up here is also doing the same thing so let me just show you that I'll go between here and here there and also this side that's shorting and as well as that you see this capacitor here is also shorting so again if I just go I can just use my leads here and go straight across it and you can see it shorting out all the other big capacitors are not doing that so uh, I can't remember where they all are now uh, da, 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 da. let's just go across a couple of them so this one this one here all the others are, are not shorting so if I pick a ground so for example here then that's not shorting but both legs are shorting on that capacitor so that's not right what else is there now was there another one yeah also this one here which I believe is C30 is also shorting on both legs as far as I can see anyway unless it's unless my meter's just been oversensitive but there's other things like for example there's a diode here and there's also so this says D8 and this one says DZ1 so I presume that this one here is a Zener diode but again I'm not too sure but let me put this to uh, the diode test and then if I go across this diode here it's reading the same both way round so if I go that way you can see it says not a point zero zero six and if I go this way it also says a very simple well there you go point zero zero six and as well on the Zener diode here but they look exactly the same both diodes look exactly the same I'll show you that in a minute but this way round point seven yeah point seven three which you would think is normal but then this way around, it's also reading 0.7. So it's the same uh, same reading both ways. But maybe, could that be something to do with the capacitor? I don't know. But if you have a look at this diode here, which just says D8, that kind of, I mean, it's really hard to see, but it's got a stripe and then a tiny little marking. Don't know what that means. And this one here, to me, it looks exactly the same. I've got like a, a stripe and a tiny little marking. So I'm hoping it's not going to be the diodes because I really don't know how to read them. What I'm hoping is that it could be this big capacitor here. But I'm thinking because this capacitor is short in here next to this little chip, I'm wondering if this chip has gone faulty because it's very close here, isn't it? Right next to the chip. So I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to unsolder them one by one and see there might be more than one fault or it might be one thing dragging everything else down you know on that kind of rail it might be earthing sorry grounding everything on that rail so uh, yeah I'm gonna be just unsoldering it bit by bit and see what happens right I'm just working my way through so for example I've taken off this diode here and it's still showing a short I've taken off this capacitor, still showing a short. Taken off this capacitor, the pads are still showing a short. I took off this capacitor, which was shorting, and uh, it's still showing a short on here when I go across the, the two at the back. And also, this is testing OK. So, for example, this is 47 microfarad, and if I go on to here, I think it's coming up as 53 or something. There you go, 53. So, uh, I don't know if that's light shining, there you go. And if I go back onto here, pick a, a ground, and if you have a listen, it's shorting on both of them. Unless, unless I'm reading it wrong, because anything, what is it, one or less is a short. So if I'm on here, That's five, so it's not one, is it? It is five. So just because it's beeping, it doesn't mean... See, that's point two, so that's less than one. So that's definitely a short that side. But that side's not. Yeah, I don't know, I'm starting to feel a bit out of my depth. I'm going to keep working through and see if I can see anything. Right, so I've taken the two uh, diodes out. This was the one that was marked up as diode, and this one's Zena diode. Now, if I go on to uh, the diode test, let me zoom out. Then this one here, the Zena diode, is looking good because if I go this way round, you will see it's got a nice reading of 
Okay, so it's nothing that way round. Let's go around this way. There you go, 0.7. So that's good. But now let's go on to this other one here. And basically, this has got the same reading both way, both ways round. Yeah, so you see that? 0. Point... Actually, it's gone to OL now. Hold on. Oh, there you go. 0. 0.08, but it's the same both way round. Let me go on to uh, ohms and then show you on this one because it's clearer. So if I go here, it's coming up as 3.5 ohms. And this way round, let me just double check that. I'm not sure if I've done that. It keeps flicking around on me. Right, look, 3.45, yeah? Now this way round. Right, apologies, it keeps flicking. Right, so if I go this way round, it's coming up as 3.45. And if I go this way round, There you go, 3 point, it works its way down to the same again. So I don't really know what's going on with that. It doesn't look right. I'm wondering if there's more than one fault on this board. But I think that would be unlikely. Right, that's interesting. I took off this chip here, and basically all the shorts, as far as I can see, have gone. So that's the capacitor there. That's not shorting anymore. Only on one leg, which is correct. And then, for example, the Xena diode, if I go to here, nothing there. If I go to the pads for the capacitor, just one leg up there. Xena diode, one leg, little capacitor here, one leg, and this capacitor here, one leg again. So uh, that says to me that possibly this chip is faulty. Okay, so I've got everything back in the board apart from the chip, but I'm still not happy with this diode here. So everything else is testing like it should do, I think, because it's just like shorting on one side. If I go to continuity here, like that capacitor now is only on one side. This one here is only on one side. This one up here is now only on one side, so that's all good. And now if I was to go to the main capacitor here, let's just get a, a ground. Well, not the main one, but the bigger one. Nothing there and something there. So that's uh, that's good, yeah? So nothing here and then something here. But now if you have a look at this, if I put it onto diode test, this diode's still testing wrong. So if I go, for example, with the Zena diode up here, even though they both look exactly the same, if I go this way round, it's OL, which is good. And if I go this way round, it's 0.7, which says to me that's good. But now this one, watch. It's reading 0 0.007, and it's exactly the same reading this way round, which isn't right. I'm sure that's not right. If I go into ohms, it's reading 3 point something ohms both ways. There you go, 3.1 ohms. It's annoying, see 3.1 ohms. It's annoying that I've got two things that are not clear. Now, is this chip faulty or is it just this diode? And I don't know how to read this. I don't know how to read this diode. I don't know. I'm going to have another look online, but it's not clear. I can't even see what color band that is. This one up here looks to be... This one up here, that looks to be testing okay, looks to have a green band and something else, but this one here, I don't know. Is it a brown band with just a tiny little mark in this? Really, really unclear. There is one other thing. I might look, see if I can get the schematics of this online because maybe that would help me. So I still don't know if this chip is faulty or not. I really don't know, but I'm going to get the pin out of it online and I'm going to check out this as well. Right, okay, so next day now, and this is the 
data sheet for this chip. It's marked up as something slightly different, but every time I put my chip into it, this is what comes up. So mine's called an MC908EY16, and then it's got a load of digits. So mine hasn't got these ones in the middle, but this is the only data sheet I can find. It seems to match up. So uh, yeah, it must be it must be this one. Now, remember mine was shorting, and then when I took it off the board, all the shorts disappeared on the board, yet the chip itself is still short, and I will show you that. On my one, it's shorting in between pins 28 and 27 which is basically VDD and VSS. Now VDD is the power and VSS is the ground so I'm really worried why it's shortened between them. I'm wondering if the chip itself has fried. Now I've ty typed up on Google like VDD uh, short to VSS and everybody says it's to do with an over voltage and the chip is fried. I'm not talking about this particular chip but just in general. Now remember there was a capacitor in between both of them where that's showing up here. I think it's to do with noise because it says place the C1 bypass capacitor as close to the MCU as possible and it says about uh, to prevent noise problems. So if you have a look here, this is the VDD, this is the VSS and this is the capacitor in the middle of it. So that all makes sense. But why have we got a short here? Now, on my particular board, it looks like pins 27, 26, and 25 are all joined together, and pins 28, 29, and 30 are all joined together. So these go off to a pad, these go off to a pad, and they're joined by the capacitor, and then they go off after that. Now, I have been chasing them around the board in case it's something else, and after here, they do go off to this thing here, which I presume is an inductor, but that then goes to these pins here. Now, on this particular model, these pins are not used. The only pins used are all these ones down the bottom. We have got another inductor there. But so I'm wondering, maybe not all these pins are actually in use. So possibly it might not be a fault on my particular board if this side here is not in use. Because these go, you know, the traces go off down to this inductor, this resistor, and then it goes off to the, the pin here. I mean, I haven't traced where else it goes in the board. But... Uh, I'm wondering if all the issue might be to do with this little diode here because this diode is definitely not testing as a diode should unless in this instance it's playing the part of something different. So I really don't know what to do. Part of me is tempted to change this diode out for just a random small diode that I have because I do have, for example, tiny little ones that I got. I got like a diode kit from uh, CPC. So I'm tempted to put that one on there. I cannot read this here. I cannot read what uh, what the markings are. I've looked online and a lot of the small glass ones are Xena diodes, but this one here just says D8. I mean, you can see there, I mean, I don't know what those markings are. Is that brown or black? Really can't see. And then it looks like it's got like a silver marking, but the silver marking seems to be part of the actual diode itself. This one up here, is testing okay, but it, to me it looks exactly the same. Not sure if the marking in certain light looks a little bit green, it's so hard to see, but this one is marked up as DZ1, which makes me think, could this possibly be a, a Xena diode? I mean, we have got normal diodes dotted around the place as well. There you go, D5, that looks like a normal one, and that's got markings on that you would be able to read. We've also got like SMD surface mount ones here, D9 and D10. Again, they've got markings on, so you would be able to read them. But what on earth is this one here? I haven't got a clue, but there's definitely a short across here. So if I was to remove the short here, in fact, if I was just to remove this diode completely, then I think the relay would work. But obviously the diode's here for a reason. Uh, is it to block AC? I don't know. Is it to somehow regulate the voltage so that only 12 volts is going into it? I do not know. Or is it a Xena diode? I haven't got a clue and that's what makes me really nervous about just changing it out completely. So uh, yeah, I think there's possibly a problem with the diode and I think there's possibly a problem with the chip as well, but I don't know. The thing about the chip is when I did the PlayStation 3 video, a lot of people said that shorts around the chip are normal if the chip uses very little power. So maybe these are one of these really energy efficient ones that use little power. Maybe the short between these two is completely normal. I don't know. So right now, I am very close to buying another one for £119.10p, which is a huge amount of money when it could just be a fault with the chip or the diode, which I'll be more than happy to replace. The thing is, the chips you can get from AliExpress, but they're gonna come from China, they're gonna take an age to come. And also the diode, I can't read anyway, so I've got nothing to go by on that diode. So after I release the video, 
a lot of you will probably have all the information for me, but beforehand, right now, I'm under pressure to get this done because my wife wants the dishwasher working again. Because once you're used to having a dishwasher, it's time consuming to go back to doing everything by hand again. There is one other option and that's on eBay. There is uh, somebody who is actually refurbishing them. So you send them your board, they fix them and send them back. And that's around 30 something pounds. So that would be a lot cheaper. Again, I don't know how long it's gonna take. It looks like I can get this next day delivery. So I really don't wanna spend this much money, but I think I'm running out of options. What I'm tempted to do is just pop that non-standard diode in there and see what happens, you know what I mean? Like, yes, I might blow up the board, in which case I'm getting a new one anyway. Am I likely to blow up the heater? Don't think so. Am I likely to blow up those uh, switches down the bottom to do it with the water? I don't think so. So the worst case scenario would be that it all goes on fire and burns the house down and that would be awful. But again, is that likely to happen? Would it not just kind of blow the board itself? Really don't know because I believe that diode is there to protect the, the relay and the relay is there to allow a low voltage switching on high voltage. So obviously there's high voltage going through it, but I think it's, it's to allow a 12 volt switching rather than having to switch to 40 volts. It's the 12 volt that does the switching to then push the 240 volts through, I think. But you know, this is just all me thinking. Let me get the camera on a tripod. And I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna show you what this actual chip is testing. So we have the chip here. We've got it set to continuity. I'm gonna to go to the third and the fourth one, which is actually pins 27 and 28. So third and fourth. There we go, hold on, it's so hard to uh, get into grip. There you go, so it's a short at, it's four point, well there you go, it's a complete short now, isn't it? Oh look at that, that's interesting, it's jumping between the two. But point two, that's a complete short, isn't it? Just so we haven't got the annoying noise. So it starts from four, but then it goes down. Let's do that again. Right, I'm gonna do it so I try not to wiggle it. So that's on there nicely, and that's on there nicely. Right, it starts at four, let's see how long it takes before it goes right down. That's strange, it's staying there now. I don't know, but then when I go across the other pins, so when I go to the next two along, they're not, uh, they're not short, see that's mega ohms. That's open. I really don't know. Yeah, well, really don't know. Now, when it comes to this diode, I've made my mind up what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the risk. Now, I do keep saying it, obviously don't copy me, because what I'm doing now is probably dangerous. But I am gonna solder this chip back in over here, and then I'm gonna take this diode out, and I'm gonna put this diode in. So then, and also have to put the relay back in. So it's gonna be exactly the same as it was before, apart from this diode is no longer gonna be here. I'm gonna swap it with this one here. And then if it doesn't work, I'm not gonna order that, because I'm not gonna wait for five weeks for it to come to China. I am just gonna pay the 120 pound and get a new board. Uh, yeah, there's there's nothing I can there's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do. I, I can't see any other option out of it apart from releasing the video and then letting you lot decide what's wrong with it and then I could buy the parts. But again, that could take many, many days. And secondly, then there's no real outcome to the video, is there? It's a kind of video that's just hanging up in the air. So at least if I get a new card, I'm hoping, a new board here, I'm hoping that that will fix the problem. And <laughs> it's going to be such a shame to have to spend so much money for something that could possibly be small. But you never know, look, this diode may fix it. 
I, I, I really don't know if the tolerances are slightly different. Maybe it doesn't make such a big impact on here or maybe it would have a huge, huge impact. I really don't know. So let's get everything back on this board anyway. And with this diode that I've just taken off, you can see that the symbol's underneath it. Now there is a different symbol for a Xena diode, but I don't know whether it would be marked up like that on a board or not. Because that's just a symbol for a normal diode, but I've got a feeling that even if it was a Xena, it would still probably have that mark in there. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be putting, you see the little symbol here for the diode? The line is going to be where basically the band is, so it's going to go this way round. I haven't got an SMD one, these are through hole, but I'm just going to cut the legs. Right, so that is it back on. Well, a different one back on. And let me zoom right in to this one here and then hopefully somebody might actually be able to tell me what it is. And then on the off chance this does work, I can order this one and then put it in the board and then my mind will be at ease that I've done the right thing. Right, so this is the one that I think is not testing correctly. Shall I see if I can get it any closer? Right, that's the closest I can get it without it going out of focus. Yeah, so if you know what that is, please, please, please put it down in the comments because I've been looking at pictures online of diodes, glass diodes, mini, mini MELF, I think they're called, mini, M-E-L-F. I think that's what these ones are, but I really don't know. Well, let's get some IPA, clean this board up, and then examine it. What I'm using to clean it. chip and everything looks fine so let me zoom right in right so this is the chip now and it is all soldered back on it went on nice and easy with the soldering iron and a bit of flux if you want to see the chip name this is it uh, this is it here there you go MC908 EY16ACFJE. That was the other Xena diode or a normal diode, I'm not too sure. That one does look like the band is slightly green, and this is just my eyes. And now we have the relay back on, which went on nice. You can see all the and then we just clean them. Got to clean them. There you go. So that's all on nice now over here. And the dodgy diode is now there. But it's on nice and securely. Right, so I have to get the heater element back in. I'm just gonna reuse the old one. I am gonna scrape a little bit of the scale off on the inside, just using a screwdriver. And then I'm gonna put it back together. Not fully, I don't think I'm gonna put it fully back together. I'm just gonna partially put it back together. Uh, and I will start filming again once I'm about to turn it on. And we'll see what happens with this. Okay, I've got it back together enough to test it, so I've made a little bit of room in this cupboard so I can get to the plug nice and easy. So let's turn it on, we'll turn the water on as well. Let's 
Right, so the power's on, water's on. We've got a light up here. Let's put it on a quick wash and let's see if it's going to uh, go crazy or not. Now, I'm going to, I've got a little temperature thing here. So let's try to pop this in here and see, see if it registers like a, a, a higher temperature or not. I hope I don't break that lead. Okay, so let's go to, so this is still working. Let's just go to a 30 minute wash. And, uh, hold on, as that goes off. There we go, so now let's close it and see what's going to happen. Right, so we'll see if it does the cycle or not, and also we'll see if the temperature rises up or not. So I'll get back to this in a bit. Right, okay, it's only been a few minutes. And to begin with, the temperature was going down, which had me worried, but now it's starting to go up, which is good. Because this has only got a cold water supply, it's not a hot water supply, so the heater is doing everything. So if the temperature's going up, that says to me that that heater at this moment in time must be working. My worry would be, is that once it finishes the cycle, is the heater still going to be on because I've messed around with that diode? Because this is, uh, you know, sometimes this can just be left on overnight. So, for example, it does its thing, and then it's just left in standby here. So what I have to do is, if it does work, I'll have to put my hand on that heater in about half an hour to see if it's still warm or not. Okay, it's still climbing. Okay, so we're now in the 40s. Right, amazingly, it's now gone into the 50s. So this is brilliant and I can actually feel the warmth everywhere now. So even without that, I would have been able to tell that it was getting warm. And now I think we're about 15 minutes in and it's gone all the way to uh, 62 degrees. So this is looking really good. Right, so we're still rising, we're at 68.3 now. Now, really, I wouldn't really want it to be going much more than 70, because I'm thinking that, because, uh, you know, it's got the wash thing here, it says 70 degrees and 65. So, if it just kept on going up and up and up, that would indicate to me that that is going to be the problem. So really, I want this to kind of stop soon. Maybe that's what the diode does. It allows... Uh, you know, maybe it allows the heat to go through, but then once it, once the thermostat kicks in, well then again, it should be the thermostat that stops the, the heat from going, you know, stops the, stops it from going through rather than the, the relay. I don't know, but maybe if that is a Zener diode, because the Zener diode allows flow through in one direction, but then what happens is, it then puts it through in the other way once it reaches a certain voltage. Oh, actually, look, it's starting to drop. It went up to 68. There you go, it's going down. Brilliant. But hopefully now, that means, if it's going down, that the heater right now shouldn't be working. I don't know whether it drops to a certain amount and then kicks back in again or not, or whether on this 30-minute cycle, that's it. Maybe it gets up to maybe nearly 70 degrees, because remember, I don't know how accurate this is and then, uh, then it stops after that. Well, I presume that's draining now, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's definitely draining now, isn't it? And now it must be doing, afterwards, I, I, was, I would think it would do some sort of rinse. So would it, I suppose it would rinse with hot water again. Well, I don't know, anyway, I'll keep an eye on it and see what happens. Okay, so it looks like cold water's going into it now because it's reducing quite rapidly. And now it's climbing again, so it must be getting heated up again. Okay, annoyingly I've got to go on a school run, so I'm not going to be able to complete the cycle. I, I could, Time ran away with me today, so I didn't realise I was cut so short for time. So I'm going to turn this off, and hopefully when I come home and turn it on again, it will finish the cycle. Yeah, now just for safety, I am going to unplug it. When I unplug it now, I'm not sure whether it is going to keep that cycle or not. But if not, we can just start a new one. 
Okay, I'm back from the school run, so I'm going to plug it in again and we'll see if it starts up. Yeah, so it looks like it does, so I'm just going to leave it now, do its thing, and we'll see what happens with it. Okay, so again, it's 61 degrees, and it sounds like it's stopped filling up now. So I'll probably empty out, rinse it, and I'll say that will be it then. Okay, slightly worried now, because it's just kind of stopped. It didn't beep at me to tell me it had finished, because normally there's a little alarm that goes off. And uh, there's just like a humming noise coming from it. So it's not doing anything. I don't normally do a 30 minute wash and also I don't normally sit and listen to the dishwasher so maybe this is normal but uh, yeah, I'm not too sure. Maybe I should open it up and see if there's any water or anything inside it. Okay, well there's certainly a lot of steam in there. Well, I'll leave it alone for another little bit longer. I can't pretend where the hum's coming from. I'm worried that it's coming from the heater. Not sure. Oh, panic over. It's doing something now. So maybe it just kind of stops mid-cycle for a few minutes. Maybe that's completely normal. Yes, there we go. So if I was just patient, it would have been all right. So that's the end alarm. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it like this. So now let's pretend that I'm out and I wanna see if the heater is still hot after a little while. So you can see all the lights, uh, all the lights are on here. So I'm just gonna leave it. My worry is with that diode, uh, like I said earlier, is it still gonna apply power to the heater element, so basically it's just burning constantly. I suppose the other way to test that would be via the plug, but I haven't got one of those meters that tests, uh, hmm, see if it's drawing power, then I would know. Well, what I'll do, I'm gonna leave it now for about half an hour and I'm gonna feel that heater because by then it should have cooled down because it's a big lump of metal. And then uh, I'll have a better idea if it's still red hot, then I know that, uh, that, that I'm uh, right to be worried, and if it's cool, then I know maybe it's going to be working all right. Okay, good news. I put my hand in there. It's still slightly warm because not enough time has passed, but there's this, it's not red hot at all. It's just kind of like lukewarm. So I think at this moment in time, it appears to be okay. So I'm going to put it back together put it back in its place, and then I can put on the normal wash that I normally do, which is a 65 degree one. Right, okay, so it's been on a long wash now. And there you go, I can feel the heat. And let's see if they come out nice and clean. It's probably gonna get all steamed up. <laughs> yeah, and they're dry as well. So 100% that has worked, because beforehand it was all dripping. How interesting was that? So now, I would be over the moon, I'm really happy, I am happy, it's just that I'm really unsure about this diode here. So if you know about this little diode, please let me know, because then I'll go straight on to CPC or Farnells, and I will order up one, because I'm sure they're only gonna cost 10, 20, or 30p. And it looks like if I can get that exact one, then this dishwasher will be working absolutely fine. Who knows, maybe the diode I placed it with, I might have got lucky, and maybe it will work fine with that one in. It certainly has done two washes now, and it looks like it's all gone absolutely perfect. So, it was quite a long one. In hindsight now, I wish I hadn't bought the heater, but I plan to keep this dishwasher, so the heater will give up eventually, and then at least I've got one to replace. But a bit of a schoolboy error there on my behalf. But I'm, I enjoyed this one, and I particularly like the fact of fault finding on the circuit board. I didn't think I was gonna do that on this, 
But it was interesting. I, I did like it. And as well as that, I quite like the way that the chip that I thought was faulty obviously is not faulty. So something I need to watch out in future. If there's components that, are, that look like they're shortened to ground, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are faulty. So hopefully you enjoyed this video too. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.